Welcome, hockey fans, to the 2023-2024 Pac-10 Championships. My name is Gary Allen. I'll be joined by play-by-play -play announcer Tyler Pisani here in a minute. He's doing some behind-the-scenes work right now. And we're off. It's down in UW zone. They're bringing up slowly. That was Matthew Klink that brought it up. He shoots it deep in the USC zone. Both squads looking to really come back from earlier, but a big hit. Noah Lauren just blew up a UW Husky on that one. They are taking the body, and, and uh, Christopher Chow just picked up an interference penalty. He just came in and ran over the Husky, and I think that was... Uh, Grant Stevenson, but he got right back up. But So UW will be on the power play for two minutes. I don't think USC wants to play this type of game against UW because the Huskies have a strong squad, and, and I don't think the Trojans want to get down very much at facing this squad. They are talented. They're the defending champs last year in this tournament, and uh, I've watched them a couple times this year, and they're just an outstanding hockey club. This is my first chance to see USC face off to the right of the net minder, which is uh, Chansey for USC. USC wins the puck, throws around their boards, tries to shoot it out, and they get it squirted out, picked up by Dominic Wolf for the Huskies. He's in his zone. He's checking out to get to Smith. Smith gets it. He kicks it up nicely enough. Another USC's obviously decided they're going to take the body because uh, Xander Mukanos, he just laid out another Huskies coming into their zone. So I'm wondering if that's not what their game plan is, just start using the body. Tyler Levin brings it up for USC. He's in the Husky zone. He takes a quick shot, went high over the head of Tyler Roberts. And I know, and I've seen Roberts play quite a bit, and that is one outstanding net miner. So USC is going to have to figure out how they're going to try to attack him because he's got great lateral movement, quick glove hand. Very impressed with that net minder. Christopher. Well, I stand corrected. That was Owen Phillips that got the penalty. Sorry about that. Uh, Chow won the draw for USC. Dumped it back. Went a little too far for Newlock. He shoots it all the way down to the Huskies end. Far boards. Huskies coming out on attack in the neutral zone. Clink tries to get it. Went a little too far for him. Nice job by Zachary Kulzanda for USC. He just dumped the puck down. The Huskies bringing it up on the attack. They're in the neutral zone. Cross USC's line. They're in deep. Did it try to do a wraparound. Quick wraparound and a nice shot 
by Christopher Williams. I'm not sure if someone from the Huskies tipped that or that was just Williams from the blue line, but he unleashed one and it went over the top shelf. I don't think Chancey had a shot at that one. There was too much traffic in front of him. But the penalty came back to bite USC, and they're down one zip to the Huskies. But nice shot by Williams. Again, I'm not sure if it was tipped, but he let go of a rocket on that one. USC wins the draw. Here's my play-by-play -play guy, Tyler Pisani. He's joining me now. We got Levin in. He took a quick shot on the Huskies. But, again, they're going to have to figure out Tyler Roberts because that guy's an outstanding netminder. Huskies bring it in. Are you on air, Tyler? Come on, I buddy. think I've made it. There you go. I told people it's official. You, you were behind the scenes working hard. They got stuck with me for a few minutes. That was a Boy, shot. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that score by Williams for the Huskies, but, man, that was a bullet from the blue line. Yeah. Barn, was that bar down? I heard it as I was walking in. It was, and I wasn't sure if it was tipped. I couldn't get the angle off that, but if it was, then that was one hellacious shot by Williams. You said that was Williams that scored? Yep, yep. Well, that's who I, it looked like, but again, I'm not sure if it tipped. But that, however, it is that was a beautiful play by the Huskies. Well, it's just a it's a good reminder at this level how important the special teams are. Oh, huge! Because uh, you saw, you know, you, USC sends somebody to the box, and then goes down by one. But yeah, I want to just our scoreboard camera here for just oh. a sec. Well, it looks like it came back. <laughs> uh, we'll we'll adjust it here. This is a small little minor technicality. Huskies have it behind USC's net. They squirted it out. Blocked down. They tried to push it out, but Grant Stevens knocked it down with his glove hand. But then USC got it and kicked it out in the neutral zone. Given chase is uh, Miles Salzberg. Huskies just get it back in, dumped it all the way down. But I was mentioning earlier, Tyler, it looked like at the first two minutes of this game, USC decided they were going to get physical because they were hitting anything that moved by the Huskies. Then they got that penalty, and it looks like they toned down a little bit on using the body. Well, Phillips is one of those guys that always kind of throws his body around, so him ending up in the box, I don't know if I want to say it wasn't necessarily a surprise, but you're right. With the way that they started, <laughs> so, uh, you, know, you got to try and send that message, especially if you're the number eight seed in this you know, 8-1 matchup. You're not expected to be competitive here. But every player on the ice here thinks they're going to win this game. Oh, doesn't yeah. matter what color jersey they're wearing. I sure hope they think that. But, you know, it, and that's one way to slow down the Huskies because they're quick. And if you start putting the body on them, that's one way you can attack slowing the team down. And they have to just stay out of the box because USC does not want to play a man down too much against the Huskies because they are talented. Now another shot ripped. That one up into the corner off the chest of Heath Chancey, the uh, USC netminder. So far, Chancey's had a strong game. He's, he's moving it real well, but I was talking earlier about Tyler Roberts, how talented he is, and USC's going to have to figure out some ways to beat him. They're going to have to get some traffic in here because that kid is talented. That one off the wall, rims all the way around in front of the USC bench. An exciting night last night here, Gary, with the skills competition. Got to see some of these guys uh, really kind of get into it and uh, we got to see what their abilities were opportunity there for Rimmer and on the back post or, I'm sorry that was uh, Wolf rather McConnell snapped it that was a nice shot by him a little bit too high but you talked about the skills competition I loved and I don't remember the gentleman that won the breakaway but with the cape and everything that was some smart moves by him very talented that was very you know, impressive. Blew the judges away with that one. And then a little mini stick one. That was a good one, too. So, yeah, it was quite fun watching them. Yeah, if you uh, if you missed it, you can go back. It's on this uh, YouTube channel or Facebook page, wherever you're watching. And they're going to say that uh, USC came into the zone just a little bit early, thanks to Micah Kim. Well, we're having a little disagreement between a Husky and a Trojan right now. That was uh, 12 from O'Brien for the Huskies, and I can't pick – USC, but I can't pick up who the Huskies decided they wanted to chat. Just recapping the awards banquet last night. Good night out there. A uh, big shout out to the new Pac-8 executive director, Travis Allen, taking over for AJ Bolden uh, of US or of uh, Utah fame, who's been running the conference for the last uh, decade or so. 
So thank you to AJ, who's uh, kept this league afloat through uh, COVID and everything else. But we're really excited to have uh, Travis in charge of the league and see where he can go. He'll be flanked by Matt Cleeton, who's actually on the bench today for Utah. A big hit behind the net there. And uh, Johnny Lupacino, I think is how we say his last name, the, uh, the WSU coach. Big hit there at the blue line. Whoa. And USC, just like that, picks up the loose puck, and it's Chris Chow. It was Micah Kim knocked off of the puck, and Chow picked it up in open ice, picked his spot. And just like that, we're all knotted up at one in the 8-1 game here early in the Pac-8 championship. Well, I remember Chow from last year, and, and, and he was in the skills comp last night. And I think he won the accuracy contest. And you see it there. The Huskies got to be aware of him. He came in. I don't think Roberts had a shot at it, you know, any chance at it, because that was a bullet that went up top shelf on him. Nice play by USC. We'll see what happens off of this. So that goal officially 625 of the first period puts USC level with the reigning champion, uh, University of Washington Huskies. Drop pass back, bangs it off the wall behind the cage. Some new life in USC now. After that goal, a little bit more pep in their step. Last year, they only had, they only brought seven guys up here. The turnover, dangerous pass right out front. Uh, but they only brought seven guys last year, so it was hard for them to be competitive in any game, having traveled all the way up from Southern California uh, up here to the Northwest. And they've got a full squad today. So yeah, Different look than, uh, than what we've seen from USC in the past, both at our showcases and uh, at the tournament. Here comes Levine. Tries to get it across the ice to Foley. And I wanted to see USC with the full squad because they were impressive last year when they were so short. And when I saw them this year, they were shorthanded. And I always wanted to see a full squad by them because they are talented. The Trojans are no slouch. And they're going to call that a hand pass as it was touched up in the neutral zone by Taluch. So with just under 12 and a half left in this first period. Two goals. One from Williams of UW and the answer from Chris Chow. Two players I think we kind of assumed would find the back of the net this weekend, Gary. Well, that's what's in intriguing about anytime you're in a one and done tournament, it brings out the best of players. Uh, and But it adds a lot of pressure on them, too. Like you look at USC, they travel a long ways. They don't want to go after just one game. There's another big hit. Rimmerin just absolutely leveled after he got that one off. He's a little slow getting back into the zone or getting back out of the zone. Well, I think that's part of the USC strategy. Take the body, wear him down, try to get him in the third period. If you keep hitting him, it, it'll slow him down. And they've definitely taken the body here so far. So an up and out into the neutral zone now. Picked up by the Trojans. Here comes Mucanis. And that into the glove of Roberts. That's the third shot for USC. UW with four already in this one. A guy I really think they're going to have to watch real carefully is uh, Darren Morris. He, he's an awfully talented player and USC's got to keep an eye on him. And, and along with um, Clink, he's another strong player. That that shot went off the post. USC's putting on a strong attack. Extremely strong showing by USC right now. That goal definitely gave him more life. A little technical difficulty. Yeah, just a quick look there. at the schedule here for the weekend. Pucks to the left. Roberts. Face off one by USC. Huskies came in, intercepted it. Nice job. That would look like it was Andrews. He stole it. Watton behind the net. He brings all the way out the flank. Took a quick shot, smothered up by USC. But we talked about this last year, Tyler, about USC, how it would be nice to see him with a full squad because they're talented. Mm -hmm. 
and when they only brought up eight, and, and they, even though the game wouldn't indicate it, they got beat pretty handily. But just how they played is like, we can't, well, we talked about it several times, just how good could they be if they had a full squad, and we're seeing it right now. Mm-hmm. Because right now they're giving the Huskies everything they want. And um, it, so it's, I, it, it may be an extremely interesting game here. It, I mean, early on, I think USC is giving UW a little bit more of a fit than they anticipated. Well, they definitely are outplaying them right now overall. Wolf, a little drop pass, a couple of players, and now a rush heading the other way. Four on two for USC. Bring it into the zone is Levine. He's going to go across, shot taken, deflected down into the corner. And the Huskies looking to send it back out the other way. Touch pass into the neutral zone from Wolf. No, I, I, it, it is very interesting watching USC full strength. Because um, when we saw him earlier this year, we said the same thing. It's like, because it, with it being sort of handed, you could wear them down. But I've been very impressed with the Trojans right now. Actually, extremely impressed with them. Almost halfway through this first period of action here at the Pac-8 Championship Tournament in Cheney, Washington. And the Huskies trying to add a second one here in the first period. Right now, I'm knotted up with the Trojans. This one touched up. They're going to say no icing, so it's going to give the Trojans a chance to get fresh skates on the ice, chance for UW to set something up, and that's what they're going to do, bringing it down the low wall, was Williams. Bouncing puck out front, dangerous for USC, but they're able to get it up and cleared. Pushed out off of the wall, a big hit leveled by Maloney. Maloney now with it right out front and just can't get underneath the puck to get it up over those leg pads. Now back to the Spokane product, Darren Morris. It's tipped. I'm not sure. Oh, net dislodged there. Well, one thing USC is, and they, they already know this, but they have to be careful because you look at a Maloney, Williams, Morris, um, Plink. You could go down the list of UW players and just how talented they are. Lewing, they're a stout hockey team. But right now, USC's giving them a heck of a battle. Like you were mentioning, you look at the shots on goals, 7-5 to five in UW's favor. But this is definitely a tighter game than I think some people may have thought it would be at this point. I, I agree with that completely. I mean, USC, they, they don't travel well as a team. And we've talked about that. So half of their schedule being on the road in this conference, that makes it tough to, to win those games. But when they're at home, they're a stout club, and that's what we're seeing here is that full squad from L.A. and how evenly matched, I'd say, they are against uh, the Huskies so far. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. It's, it's been an evenly played game. Uh, but, yeah, that's why I think the record can be mis- misleading because you're right, they, they travel with basically half a squad, so you got to kind of throw that out and not really look at that. Um, but I'm glad they came up full squad. I really, really was hoping that they would because get to see them, and they have impressed me right now. The latest rankings uh, just came out last night, and the University of Washington ranked sixth in the West, while the uh, University of Southern California ranked at number 33. So a, a big big difference there in the rankings. But like we talked about, USC maybe not having their full being able to play to their full potential for the uh, the whole year. Right now it's been an extremely entertaining game. It's going back and forth. Both teams are basically neutralizing the neutral zone off of them, so they're not getting a lot of breaks. I know UW likes to do that a lot, use the neutral zone to their advantage, but USC's done a nice job of clogging them up as is the Huskies clogging up USC out of that neutral zone. Puck back to the USC defense. Toulouse trying to bring it up through neutral ice. He's going to cross the blue line, feed it down into the corner. 
Tolucci oh. is a talented player, isn't he? See, I remember yeah, watching him. He is quick. He's skilled. got great hands. Now looking to take a break straight on net. Uh, that was Lang and uh, USC netminder Chansey shuts the door at the last moment, but Lang just kind of walked past every USC player right up to the front door and then left it right there against the leg pads. Lang did a nice job of doing a toe drag at the end. He almost got it in between uh, Chansey's skate and post on that one. He almost had him drug out all the way, but that was a nice play by both those guys. Backhand pass out into the neutral zone and coming off of the bench. Uh, looked like that was Tracy. Lucky break for Eastern Washington as uh, USC almost a one on zero against the netminder. I've been impressed with the USC speed. Uh, they're really neutralizing U Dubs, but they're matching them really well with that. And, and I don't remember seeing USC that quick, but they've done a nice job. Now we have a little disagreement there for the faceoff. That's with uh, Zalzberg and. I think it's uh, Freeman. Now one sent in from just in front of the red line. Now it's going to go across the ice. Nobody there in a white uniform. So it's kicked back up to the top of the zone. Bad pass out to the slot. Turnover punched into the air by Chansey. And that time it's Salzgerber that has it knocked off of his stick. USC chasing a little bit more here in the second half of the period. Which I almost feel like as the number eight seed in this game, if you're you know, level here this late in the first period, you can take a few chances. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you might as well. You have nothing really to lose by that. But, but you, the Huskies have such skill. Their, their forwards can handle the puck extremely well. And you see it right there. Looking to make a move was Phillips. And just not able to stop fast enough. So here comes our zooming off. He's got it on the left side. Swiped away by Mucanis. And now pushed up ahead again to Chow. Chow's got the first goal. Looking to make one man miss. Tries to feed it back out into the center. Chow there with it in the corner. Battling. Chris Chow gets it out to his own man. And now the Huskies looking to throw the body around a little bit. Maloney trying to take it right to the goal mouth. And... Looks like we'll get a penalty here. A hook likely against USC as they were scrambling to keep Maloney from getting that shot off. This one, 14-44 of the first period. It's going to be Toluch for a hook. So the Huskies able to find the net on their first man advantage today, Gary. They're going to have to stand strong here to stay in this one late in the first period. Well, and that's what we were mentioning earlier, that USC can't keep taking penalties and expect to keep the Huskies out of the net. Because, again, we mentioned a little bit earlier, the stick handling by the bulk of the Huskies are very impressive. A lot of the players, and I'm going to draw back your memory, one of my favorite hockey players was Michael Shippey for the Huskies. <laughs> The guy was incredible with the puck, and and they got a lot of players that play like that. Hey, he does right now for the Huskies. He was a big reason that they won that Pac-8 championship last year. I had to get his name in. That, that kid was incredible. So The Huskies doing a good job cycling the puck. Wolf up top now. He's going to take a couple of steps. Feeds it back up top. Now to the near side. Looking for that crasher on the back door. That would have been Wolf. But now Lang circles all the way back in. Smith across the blue line. He's got Maloney behind him. Watton in the center. That's where he goes. Off the wall to Watton in the corner. Man on the back door. USC's got to watch that. That's how the Huskies dismantled Eastern Washington earlier this year. Back door passes, especially on the special teams. Well, that's part of their attack is they like going behind the net, and then they sneak the guy either, either side. that He just floats in. And if you watch the backside here, Lang just keeps going back and forth between the top of the crease and the penalty spot. Top of the crease, penalty spot. Off of the skates, 48 seconds left on the power play. Now back up top to Wolf. Wolf mishandles, able to get it down low to Watton. Watton puts it on the net, picked up on the far side by Lang. Lang with it. 
Circles up towards the blue line. Near side now. Top of the left circle. He's going to feed it to the top of the zone to Williams. He's got the first goal for the Huskies today. Williams plays with it. Huskies getting some new skates on the ice. Battle for the puck behind the net. It squirts out and wisely, Chansey holds on to it. That was interesting. The system that the Huskies were using on that, they were doing a almost like a zone, and they had it moved over to Jancy's um, left side, and it went to the right. If they had, could have got the puck over there, it would have been a point-blank shot on that. The Huskies really cycling the puck, but not able to get anything out goal front for uh, essentially this whole power play. Even that stoppage, and now, as I say that, they bring it in across the top of the zone, but even the stoppage there was Chansey coming out of his crease to cover up that puck. But what USC did a really nice job of, they kind of collapsed their two demon once they got to the hash marks, and they kind of pinched in, and that really kind of fouled up the Huskies' attack. Chris Chow does it again. USC killing off that penalty. Passing the puck off to Chris Chow. And the a accuracy shooting winner shows it again and puts the number eight seeded USC Trojans up by one here in this first period. What happened with that one, Chow used the D-man as a screen um, on Roberts. And he, you could tell by how he reacted. He didn't pick it up until the puck was right by him. But... The Huskies have got to keep an eye on Chow. You might almost have to shadow him because he's so skilled. Well, and he's already had four or five legitimate scoring opportunities. Uh, he's got four shots already, and then he had the one that he was turned away into the corner as he tried to make the move back to the center of the ice. What makes him so hard to deal with is he's so quick. You can't really get a body on him because he'll go right by you. He's just an outstanding hockey player. There's just a very different style between these two teams, whereas the Huskies look for that rush through the defense, and USC is very much a passing team. No question. Absolutely no question. They're a real motion-type team. The move there right in front of us. Uh, looks like that was by Phillips. A little toe drag to get past the defender. Now bringing it into the zone is Foley. Trojans able to keep it in. Now over to the far side. Huskies looking to regroup and head back the other direction. But the Trojans still with it. That one tipped and up into the netting, it looks like. So they're to keep that in the attacking zone with 149 left in this opening period. The Huskies doubled up in the shots category 12 to 6, but it's the Trojans leading 2 to 1 here in the opening game of what is definitely going to be an exciting Pac-8 championship tournament. We talked about, uh, or we, we experienced it last year, the incredible comeback by the Eagles on uh, on Friday night, the big wins by uh, UW, that championship game. If you aren't down here, you're in the area, get on down here, especially for the championship game on Sunday at 11 o'clock. I know it's Super Bowl Sunday, but this will be a party here. be a good time. You can uh, More information at EW Eagles Hockey. Com. But, Gary, it's a good time to give our uh, a shout-out. We're talking about the championship game. For our championship game uh, sponsor, IEDS Logistics, we make it happen. Thank you so much for supporting college hockey and the Pac-8. Sunday at 11 o'clock, it's the IEDS Logistics championship game. Back underway here as the Trojans feed that in. Salzgerber down around the wall. Now some uh, blue line to blue line passing here behind the net for uh, USC. Maloney brings it in. He's got a man in the middle. Floats it just a bit too far over the top of Lampman's stick. Oh, that was a nice tape to tape pass right there. The Huskies, what they did, they had the Two Trojans converged on the one player in the top slot. He did a nice little pass. Got a nice shot, but again, Chancey was on top of his game. He, he's a stout goaltender. Both of these netminders here, very uh, proficient this year in between the pipes. 
Now a chance for the Husky. Smith gets it, doesn't get all of it, and it's fed off into the corner. Husky still in possession, 30 seconds left in this opening frame. Puck out front, kicked away behind the net, still in possession of the Huskies. Wolf has it up top to Morris. Morris sends it in off of the glass. Huskies still in possession. Back behind the net to Lampman. Lampman has it. He feeds it away to Enders. And that one blown dead as it heads over into the corner. So 10.2 left to play in this opening frame of the Pac-8 Championship Tournament. As a reminder, we've got games coming up all day. Next game here is 2 o'clock, then 5 o'clock, then 8 o'clock. A big shot from the top of the circle, but goes nowhere. Back down low, right out front, and that'll do it for this first period. An unlikely story to kick off this tournament as the number eight seeded USC Trojans are going to take a two to one lead over the reigning champ and number one seeded University of Washington Huskies. We'll be back in 15 minutes with the second period of action here at the Pac 8 Championship Tournament in Cheney, Washington.
Welcome back, hockey fans, to the Pac-8 Championships game here at the URC and on the campus of EWU in beautiful downtown Cheney. My name's Gary Allen. Tyler Pisani will be joining me shortly. Well, I don't know if people would have agreed, but right now USC is leading the University of Washington Huskies 2-1. to one. The Huskies are number one seed. USC is number eight. But I'll tell you right now, USC's brought up a full squad, and they are talented. This is the first time we mentioned in the first period that we've had an opportunity two years to see a full squad from USC, and uh, they are impressive. They, they're, they're actually taking it to the Huskies right now. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments they're going to make. I know one thing, the Huskies are going to have to shadow, keep an eye on, on Chow. He is just unbelievable talent. He's got both goals for USC. Huskies have started off the attack in the second period. Did a quick shot over to Chansey, who's played an outstanding game for the Trojans in net. But it's been an extremely entertaining game. And if you can make it out here for this tournament, I would highly recommend you do that. It's extremely Good hockey. Got games going all the way through. Last game today is uh, Eastern Washington against San Jose at 8 o'clock, but it is well worth your time to come out and watch this. Tyler has joined me right now. He's been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work so far. And now we're in front of the scenes. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't really know how that works. Uh, but, that, that, but sad as I understood what you were saying, so I'm not sure what that says about me right now. So had a had a chance to uh, to talk to some of the players from the other teams, some of the uh, scratches from both of these teams, front office staff, and this is uh, both teams very nervous coming into this second period for sure. This will be uh, both teams kind of feel like this is a make or break period. Well, when I was mentioned earlier, uh, this is the first time we've got to see USC full squad, and they have been impressive. I mean, they're taking it, you know, with UW being number one seed. They're giving them everything they want, and I think they got kind of caught the Huskies off guard. But you can't shortchange you a dub. They they got too much talent on that team to to say okay, they're in deep trouble. Now they're an outstanding hockey club. So yeah, I think the second period is going to dictate quite a bit going into that third, though. Well, the part that we haven't talked about is this USC team knocked off Utah down in uh in la earlier this year utah the uh number two seed coming into this comp or into this uh tournament so uh it's not completely unexpected by the usc squad to be where they're at currently well i'm wondering if you if you and dub decided they're going to come out and use the body because they came out and just blew up one of the trojans just a second ago and then they caught an icing on USC after that. But that's one thing I noticed. Like we talked about USC, they used the body a lot in the first period. So it'll be interesting to see if UW comes back and decides to slow them down that way also. So I'm intrigued to see what kind of adjustments in between periods were made. And the Huskies kind of in charge here in the first minute and a half of this period. And as I say that, the, uh, the Trojans try and head out the other direction, but still can't get it past their blue line. It's almost like a carbon copy from the first period because UW kind of dominate for two minutes, and they start off here doing the same thing. It'll be interesting to see how the Huskies continue about this game because this is not a position that they're accustomed to playing in down at all, let alone uh, down a goal in a knockout game. Yeah, and that's what people, if you're not aware of it, this is one and done, so... It, 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 there's a lot of added pressure when you're in a tournament when you know you lose one game, you're through. So that adds some intrigue, too. And being down two to one, you hit it on the head, Tyler. How much more pressure does that on you, Dub, to say, hey, we, you know, we got to do something different? But USC's giving them everything they can handle right now. But for most of the teams here this weekend, their only shot at making it to the regional tournament in Utah is by winning this tournament this weekend. The Huskies have built their season in a way that that's not a necessity for them. They're they're number four in the West right now. A loss even to USC is not going to knock them out of those auto bid to regional rankings. 
That's an excellent point you brought up because you're right. I, I'd be surprised if UW doesn't get some kind of at large berth off of it. And off of the post there, what a rocket from one knee by Blake Strand. It clangs off of the iron. But yeah, so that does add a lot more on because there's several teams. I don't know about Utah if they would have a good shot of getting an at large if they lose. But the rest of the team, they're basically going to have to win this tournament to get move on to the regional. So that adds just a ton more pressure onto you. The University of Utah is number nine. So they're a bubble team right now. If they lose their first game, potentially, uh, they, they'd still be kind of that bubble team for uh, for regionals, depending on how the auto bids from conferences shake out. It's the uh, the top 12 teams. There's uh, I think there's four or six auto bids here on uh, on the West Coast. And I'll get back to that in a second. But first, we've got our first uh, UW penalty of the day. It's Grant Stevens taking a two-minute timeout. I think they got him for a boarding. I think so. So USC going to try and extend their lead here on the power play. But as we were saying about rankings, the top two teams in the West get an auto bid to uh, the national tournament. And I, we saw Montana State here. I have no doubt that they're going to get that auto bid. Oh, uh, they're going. There's... As well as the uh, the University of Mary. So two big shot there. Two teams from uh, kind of the middle of the, the, the west side of the Midwest there, Montana and North Dakota. But So those two teams will move immediately on to the national tournament. And then the next 10 slots go by rankings except for the auto bids for the tournament. So it's a little little convoluted. USC going to shoot themselves in the foot here as two-minute seat for interference. But like you said, and you're spot on on that, um, you Dub, I think they can be comfortable if they get knocked out of here. That, but Utah, I, I, that, that adds a little pressure on too because there's no for sure thing on that one. Well, especially with the Pac-8 conference, yeah. if UW is able to to come back and win the conference as uh, as the seeds play out, then Utah, if they lose, is isn't going to have to contend with WSU or I'm sorry with UW for that auto bid role here, as uh, as UW's already going to take one of those ten positions one way or the other. That makes sense on that one, and I just noticed. That USC got a penalty off of it too. Yeah, that uh, was uh, there must have been a little scrum going on there for a second. Yeah, that was uh, an interference to Xander Buchanan. Yeah. But I find it interesting. I was watching USC when they were on the power play. They had Christopher Chow playing defense. Now he's a forward, but they had him back on the blue line. So I thought that was interesting how they're using him because that kid's so talented. You, you can go either way, obviously, but that, that was an interesting attack that they pulled on the Huskies. Now Watton down the near side, 48 seconds left on the four-on-four, four, looking to use the defender as a screen but well-read by Chansey. I liked what I saw right there with Clint. He set it up where he used the D-man as a screen. And Chance did a nice job of looking around that, but nice play by the UW Husky. Chancey's uh, 18th save of the contest so far. Face off one by the Huskies, back to the top of the zone to Clink. Takes a couple of steps, looking for that tip out front. And I, I don't know if Lang got a hold of it or not, but uh, there to close the door was Chancey again. No, Lang got it. He, he tipped it. Chancey did a nice job. He went down Butterfly quickly and, and did a really nice job because that was a nice heads-up play by the Huskies on that. But again, Chancey's just played really strong for USC. 35 seconds left on the four-on-four. Four. And then uh, exiting the box will be Stevens. And they'll have about 30 seconds of power play time uh, Will the Huskies when he gets out of the box. Bring it up the low side now are the Trojans. Out into the Husky zone, but now Lang looking for that stretch pass. They can't get it any further than the blue line, and they're going to call that offside. But I think, uh, at least from our position, it looked like Foley had held onto the puck for long enough. But 
Well, we Foley, don't get paid to make those calls. Well, Foley did a nice job, but he did. It was he did a couple toe drags to to delay a little bit till the player could get back on. And he did one too many, but that was some nice deck work by him. So quick look at the schedule for the rest of today. Coming up at 2 o'clock, it's the number two Utah Utes versus the number seven Western Washington University Vikings. At 5 o'clock, it's the Cal Bears against the Washington State University Cougars. And the primetime game tonight at 8 o'clock, the number four San Jose State University Spartans against the number five Eastern Washington Eagles. Uh, Eagles the host here, obviously, in Chile, so expect a big crowd for that game. The roost will be open in a 21 and over capacity, and the concession stand will be back. Yeah, that and that was a nice setup last time they were in town. That, that went really well. It looks like another boarding call. This one going to go against USC. USC again. Well, I think they decided to come out and start hitting them again now after about the first five minutes of this period. So it looks like heading to the box is going to be Tyler Levine. But again, we mentioned this in the first period. I don't think the Trojans want to keep playing with fire, but being shorthanded against the Huskies. Now they're down for 20 seconds. Two men. The Huskies just have too much power to keep them off the board. When we talked about them being able to take chances, but now that you're up by that goal, if you're USC, it's time to park the bus. Lock down that defense and let the Huskies use their energy trying to get through whatever fortress you built there. But uh, can't, can't build a fortress with three guys on the ice, Gary. <laughs> no. But if they can kill this off, the momentum shift that they're going to get out of this, I think I, if you're the UW coach, you're going to hope like you can put one in. Buck on the far side now, back behind the net. Penalty expires. Back to four skaters for USC. About a minute 40 of power play time left for the Huskies. They're going to stretch the zone here side to side and covered up by Chansey. And he's battered by sticks from the Huskies. Just trying to get one more poke on it. 133 left on the power play for the Huskies. But you mentioned it, Gary. If the Trojans are able to kill off this five-on-three situation completely here in the second period with a one-goal lead, that's a heck of a momentum boost. Wolf now has it. He's going to go to the far side to Smith. Back to Wolf. Fires it on net. Tipped away right out front by Watton. Now back to Smith. Smith plays it down low. Watton right out front looking for the back door. What a lift by Lang. He got his whole blade underneath that one, tried to send it up to Adam, the Western coach, watching right above the goal. Lane's going to have catwalk. nightmares over that shot right there. He, he, you could just see his expression after that. He just he just slumped. Um, and USC going to take another penalty here. This. And uh, looks like. This time it's going to be Owen Phillips. I think that was an interference. So, again, five on three for the Huskies. Their best chance to get back into this one. They're going to stretch the puck up to Wolf. He's going to put it through traffic. And a good tip again by the Huskies, but well read by Chansey. He's getting his whole body in front of it, and it's making a difference. Well, what UW's doing a nice job of, they're trying to get Chansey off his mark, and they're screening him quite a bit. Um, on that shot in particular, Chancey kind of looked around the player, but they're doing a nice job of putting traffic in front of him. This 21st save of the contest with that tip. Wolf has it, leaves it behind him, goes back to get it now. Across the ice to the far side, shot taken off the wall behind the cage by Smith. Wolf near side, he's going to go over to the far side. Now back to the near side, off the side of the cage and losing his blocker is... Chancy, and the officials are going to blow this dead, but we've explored this previous, uh, earlier this year. This is not a stoppable play in the right. ACHA. Well, the only piece of equipment that can come off of the goalie for a stoppage is the helmet. Yeah, so but... USC getting away with one there on the five on three. Chauncey, your Chancy a little out of his element there, and uh, lucky for him, the Husky player put it off the side of the net. Yeah, that was a wide open net again, so that's two of the Huskies are going to have nightmares on on that one. But I'm wondering, and I'm not defending the ref, but I'm wondering if he didn't think that was his helmet that flew off because it just shot off of it, and he just and it's side again, on it, safety. At, at this level, I, I don't think anybody's going to fault the officials for 
putting safety first. Yeah. So. But that was my hunch. But... The Huskies back with it. Wolf going to take a couple of steps from the top of the circle, and it's deflected back out into the corner by his own team. Back up top now to Wolf. He's going to try and take the same shot, looking for the back door, bouncing puck around in the blue paint and sent near side now back to Wolf. He's going to feed it down low off the wall, back up to Wolf. He's going to go to the far side to Smith. Smith looking for a backdoor opportunity to Lang. He's not able to hold on to it. Now here comes Chris Chow. He's got both goals for USC, looking for a third. And he does his best Lang impression and sends it up into the netting with a high backhander. He is talented. But I like what I'm watching, what the Huskies are doing since they're up by two guys. They're really putting a lot of pressure, moving their players really on top of the net miner, three of them, and they're really trying to use a, the traffic to get um, Chauncey off his game, and, and that's a nice technique by the Huskies and the coaching staff to just flood the, the, the crease area. So they're going to say that Chow didn't get that tipped at all, so they're going to bring that out into the neutral zone <laughs> as he sent like, it straight into the netting. It looked like it was tipped. Now Chow sent back to defense. And now brought back in. <laughs> Some musical chairs in the face-off dot here. One by the Huskies. Clank, he's going to feed it over to the far side. Very methodically building this up are the Huskies. Now gaining the blue line with Williams. Top of the zone. Now over to the far side. The Trojans able to kill off the first half of this. 43 seconds left. On to the five on four and a miscue. It's going to send it all the way back down the ice. As Roberts out of his net, he's going to leave it off for his own man. Now up the far side. Near side now to Clank. He's going to bring it across the blue line. Looking to turn his hips and get the shot off. He's going to take a couple more steps. Now looking for a man on the back door. The Huskies have Strand waiting. Right out front, deflected down and away into the corner. Now back up top to Williams. 15 seconds left. And now a breakaway opportunity for the uh, Trojans. Levine has it. He's got Chow trailing. He's going to take it himself. Picks up the rebound into the corner. Goes back down to Chow. Three seconds left on the power play. And the Trojans do a great job of killing off six consecutive minutes of power play as they're back to full strength for the first time uh, since early on in this period. One thing that's very impressive about the Trojans, they are all fast. The whole lineup is quick out there. They got some speed. Well, the Huskies are looking to to capitalize on this chaos in front of the net. And USC has done such a great job of getting a body in the way, not letting the shot get to their net minder, cleaning it up when it's at the top of the crease. And the Huskies just aren't able to get those close range shots. Well, they're almost looking like they're using a box formation out there. And that's why the Huskies are having trouble um, penetrating it. And the Trojans are doing an outstanding job of slowing them down, especially in their zone. Touched up at the blue line by Levine. Huskies circle back behind their own net. Now out into neutral ice. That one past the stick of Arzumanov. But Toulouse going to hold on to it. A big pass off the walls. Pushed up ahead. Waiting for it was Pats. And it's going to bounce off of the wall. And right to Roberts. who's going to cover that up with 10 and a half left in the second period. But I tell you that the speed of the Trojans have that's really caught my eye from top to bottom. And they, they don't skip a beat on any line that they're putting out there. And, and they're really putting a lot of pressure on the Huskies with that speed factor that they have. And they're just skipping the neutral zone. They're just dumping the puck in and chasing it. And they're catching up to it. So oh. out into the neutral zone. Back with it again. It are the Trojans into the attacking end. Toulouse got to give chase. He's got a fast skater and Irwin going to get there at the same time. Trojans feeding it out into the center. Off the wall now back behind the net. Picking it up for the Huskies is Watton across the blue line, makes one man miss, tries to get that toe drag, poked away, 
And again, the chaos goes the way of the USC Trojans. That puck on the back door waiting for a Husky and just not able to get it in. Here comes Tulu. And a good one-two opportunity there for the Trojans. And my apologies, that was actually Nick Foley who then fed it out front to Tyler Levine. Past the halfway point in this contest. And I don't know that this is a scoreline that many predicted, Gary, but it does add to the excitement of ACHA and Pac-8 hockey. Oh, no question about it. You know, you can kind of tell the Huskies are really not sure how they want to attack this. Um, and it, it's the speed of the Trojans getting them. And that's what they were going to have to do. You know, you had to wonder if they were going to be able to match the Husky speed. Without a doubt, they have. Now here come the Huskies the other way. Across. And another miss by the Huskies. I think that was Smith that came down the far side. And again, this puck keeps bouncing up and over the shoulders of uh, Chansey, but up and over the crossbar as well. Loose has it, feeds it past about six skaters in the center of the zone. Clank now muscled off the puck, but he gets back to it. Floating puck and a basket catch by Chansey, his 24th save of the contest. A vet move there by Chansey. He made that first save. The puck went away. His team had the puck on their stick. So instead of waiting for that stoppage, he fixed the net himself to try and give his team the opportunity to move back down the ice. Unfortunately, it ended up on the stick of a Husky, so it didn't work out the way that you wanted. But a very heads-up play by uh, the netminder. But Chancey, his lateral movement is phenomenal. But I'm I'm wondering how much frustration is building with the Huskies. They've had, let's face it, about five open nets, and they keep either shooting over it or off to the side. And that starts wearing on you after a while, and you start doubting, like, can we get through this? So it'll be interesting what happens with how the Huskies start adjusting. Now here comes Washington with speed. On the far side is Lang. He's got a man on the back post. From just outside the slot, the puck was sent straight down to the ice, and now here comes USC. Bring it into the zone was Banga. He's got it on the far side. He sends it over to uh, Watt, or I'm sorry, uh, Salzgaber, and Robert's going to hold on to that one. Just the 11th time, or uh, rather the ninth time, that Tyler Roberts has touched the puck tonight. Says a lot about uh, the strength of the Washington State forwards, but also says a lot about the strength of Heath Chansey and net for oh, the USC Trojans. No question about it. I have noticed picked up a little of adjustment the Huskies are trying to do. They're going on the outside of the dots, going north and south, and now they're they're picking up some speed off of that, and that's how they got that open shot last time. And then Tulu puts that shot right into the net of Roberts. Every player looking in the back of the net because they weren't sure if he got there. To Lewis so skilled. He just kind of snuck in on that one. He pinched down and USC knew that he was going to go do that and did a nice one-time shot. But I keep re repeating myself on that, but you can't count the Huskies out. They're just too powerful and quick. Well, and they've gotten lots of scoring opportunities and hockey is a game of numbers. The more opportunities you get, the more likely it is that you're going to score. And if USC continues to let the Huskies kind of batter Chansey, it's going to uh, it's going to lead to a long third period. <laughs> Roberts coming out and covering that up. But I noticed the Huskies are also now trying to shoot from the hash marks a little bit more, and I think that's because they're flooding the net with two, three guys all the time. And I think that they're going to try to block Chansey's vision and uh, see if they can put the puck behind him. But right now, Chansey's just been a stone wall for the Trojans. Face-off coming, redo number two. One by USC. Chow with it. He's going to try and put it through traffic on net. It's deflected out into the corner. Maloney there for the Huskies. He's the one that's able to push it out. Now up top to Lampman. He comes across the blue line. He's got one Trojan in front of him. He leaves it off for Williams behind him, who's got the one goal for UW so far. Morris sends it in down into the corner. Back up top to Williams. 
Fires a shot, deflected around. Out front and still, the University of Washington not able to find that puck when the net is open. Just inches away from four, five, six goals are the Huskies and just cannot solve the puzzle that is Tyler Roberts. Or, I'm well, sorry, uh, Heath Chancy. Well, that's like... There's another break for USC. Chow looking to give that one up. He's already got two today. Now one on two rush. Off to the far side is our zooming off. He's knocked off of the puck behind the net. Feeds it out front. Nobody there in white and purple, though. Chow trying to feed it ahead to Tyler Levine. These two on the same page for most of this game. Now here comes Chow. Thinks about the shot, goes between the legs of Williams. A nice, easy, casual shot there. Gives his team some time to get a line change. And the Huskies, again with speed, looking to head the other way as Wolf cuts across the neutral zone. He's going to leave it off for Lang. Lang's got Wolf right out front. Can't get the puck there again. USC knew what they were looking for here as uh, the Huskies have just been dismantling teams this year by passing in the offensive zone and the Trojans are not letting that happen at all. No, they're clogging it up really well. And that's one thing that you dub coach is going to have to do. And, and you know he will because he's an outstanding coach. Is it let his team know, don't get discouraged. Don't get frustrated. Yeah, we've had some open nets and we missed them. But we just got to keep doing what we're doing and see if we can get that puck in. That's going to be a big chore for him to make sure the Huskies keep their head up. Right out front, again, mishandled. And they're going to call... A penalty here. I'm not sure they're going to call that a hook. Well, I guess that's one way to slow down a Husky. Uh, I, I don't think the... Canis is not happy yeah. with this, and I'm not sure that I saw this either. It looked like both players had their stick on the ice. But let's take a second and thank all of the sponsors for making this tournament uh, possible this year. Uh, starting with... The, the championship game title sponsor, IEDS Logistics. We make it happen. Our tournament sponsor, our tournament hotel sponsor, Holiday Inn and Suites Cheney. Uh, Barrel House Pub and Pizza, Eagles Hockey Booster Club, Cheney Cars and Trucks, The Hub Tavern, Billy's Diner, Tea Party Podcast, and B4F Hockey or Box for Fighting Hockey Apparel, who is the official merchandise vendor for the Pack 8 Championship Tournament. You can get your merch at B, the number four F hockey.com slash pack eight. Again, that's B, the number four F hockey.com slash pack eight. Those are the nice shirts they got. They're going to be throwing them out today in the fans a little later at the Eags game. Very nice looking shirt. We got all sorts of giveaways, Gary. You know what else we got? Yeah, we got the cowbells, buddy. We got the cowbells. We got don't, the cowbells. Don't forget the thunder sticks. We got the thunder sticks. We got hand pies. Whatever you want. <laughs> the Pac-8 Championship Tournament has it. The 21 and over later on uh, tonight in the roost. Concessions coming up for that uh, later game. All of that opens at 7 o'clock tonight with uh, Eastern and San Jose State taking the ice at uh, 8 o'clock. I'm going to take the liberty here. And, I, and I'm really appreciative of the sponsors of EW Hockey. They've been with us for a long time without them it couldn't happen and it's just it's just great that they're they're coming back every year well and for those that aren't aware this is acha level hockey is club hockey there is no funds from the athletics department the only way that uh these guys are part of this team uh, darren morris fires that spokane product off of the blocker and into the glove of chancy but the only way that these players are on the ice is through player dues and sponsorships like uh, like what we get from uh, for this tournament. So a lot of people think that there's some you know big money funding these clubs as, as they're part of the athletics department, but uh, they are very much just club teams, self-funded, and uh, the community support is Huge. tremendous. It, it, this wouldn't be possible without their support. Back underway here as the Huskies still in possession. 43 seconds left on the power play. Going to the far side. Back up top to Wolf. Wolf feeds it down low. Tipped towards the leg pads. But again, turned away by Chansey. 
But if you look how low the Huskies players are, they're just trying to create havoc down there. So the goaltender, Johnson, doesn't really know which way he wants to go. The Huskies are definitely putting a heavy attack right in front of him. And Kim had that stop for a moment, but now back to Maloney for the Huskies. It's going to go up top to Wolf. Wolf trying to go through traffic and a big stick by the Trojans. Tolu able to poke that away. Back to full strength hockey again for USC, able to kill off another power play. And we talk about it a lot in this building, that power play hangover, especially in the second period. That uh, USC, even though they've got five skaters, four of their legs are still pretty tired out there. So still uh, Washington's advantage here. It's just surprising to me as, as potent of attack the Huskies have and as many penalties the Trojans take in this period that they haven't put one in back of the net. And I know that's wearing on them. It has to. And looks like Watton's stick got into uh, the skates of Mucanus. And about four more strides there. We might have had our first penalty shot. Well, now it'll be interesting if the Huskies put, or the Trojans put the puck in the net because you know they gained a lot of momentum from killing off all those penalties. And if they could put one behind there, man, they're going to go. This would this could go a long way in helping USC envision themselves in Saturday's game. If USC does win, they'll play in that first game being the lowest seed uh, available. And that's the 3 o'clock game, correct? That is the 3 o'clock game. Chow fires that from the top of the zone. He's already got two for USC. He's going to put it back down towards the center of the zone. Back out into the neutral zone now. Chow's decision-making skills just is off the chart. Just looking at that right now. He, he just did a one-time pass when he got the puck, and he's always moving. He's all fluid. He's always in motion. This one rimmed back around to the far side by Phillips. It's going to be kept near side. Now to Chow. Chow thinks about it up top to Phillips. Phillips thinks about it. He's going to go to the far side now to Levine. Puck out front. Banged off the end wall by the Huskies. A couple of white jerseys fighting over that one. And now finally cleared the length of the ice. Out of his net comes Chansey. 108 left in this second period. Chow with it. Handles it at the uh, near side point. Tried to use his body, but couldn't hold off the defender. Now Chow gets it at his own blue line. He has his pocket picked from behind. This time it was Stevens. And Chancey behind his goal. He's going to lay it off for Phillips. What Stevens is doing really well for the Huskies is he's just basically flooding Chow every time he gets a puck he uses his whole body on him and that's why he slowed down we got a penalty we'll have coming a penalty up. here on the back end as that one bangs off the glass so it'll be a 27 second five on three for the number eight seeded usc trojans as they lead the university of washington huskies here late in the second period and it's going to be stevens his second of the day for a trip maybe he flooded too much on the <laughs> on that one but you know we talked about it how the roles are reversed right now because if you dub can kill this um, two-man advantage, then the momentum may shift back to them. So it's, it's kind of a nice give and take right now both teams are doing. It looks like USC using their timeout here in the second period. They feel the gravity of this situation. Five on three late in the second period. Up two to one over the number one seed reigning champions. This is what these tournaments are made of. These are the dreams that these kids have growing up is being in these moments. Oh, it's just been a tremendous hockey game. I, I can't say enough. Both teams have played just lights out. I mean, if this is how the tournament starts, the next game between Utah and Western has uh, that's got even more potential. I'll tell you, I, you couldn't have asked for a better opening game of this tournament. These two teams are really, really stout. It's not what you expect from an 8-1 matchup, but as we always talk about in the ACHA, because of the schedules, because of the way they're built, you only see part of a team during the season. This is what you're building to for the whole year. It comes down to these three games this weekend, your chance to make it to regionals, and then on to nationals. Well, like you and I mentioned, 
quite a few times in the first period. We haven't had the opportunity to see USC as a full squad. We've seen them at a basic when they had eight, nine players. And so that's why I went coming in. You weren't really sure how it was going to pan out. And another swing and a miss by the Huskies. That time it was Maloney. Something about the ice in front of the net for Heath Chancy is just disrupting everything that the Huskies are trying to do. Less than a minute left in this second period. And on the far side, it's going to be Phillips. Because Maloney did a heck of a move, and it just kind of like, the, and again, the net was open, and he couldn't get it in. And a big save by Levine, who made a cut right at the top of the crease, got the shot off, and then uh, paid the price for it. So exactly one minute left on this power play for USC. 30.8 seconds left in the second period. The Huskies out shooting the Trojans 28 to 15. But as we said, it's the number eight seeded USC Trojans who lead two to one. Well, that's why sometimes the numbers aren't telling the whole story. Because, uh, yeah, there's a 13 shot differential on it, but. The Trojans are giving everything and more than the Huskies expected, I think. And uh, they've played an outstanding hockey game. Trojans in possession, 25 seconds left. Looking to feed it out front. Nobody in a red jersey there for Shea O'Brien. 15 seconds left in the period. Trojans going to try one more time to come down the ice. Phillips has a man touched up. Now a chase down into the corner. It looks like everybody's just going to take a break, head into this second intermission. But not the scoreline we expected here after 40 minutes of the Pac-8 championship tournament as the number one seeded University of Washington Huskies trailed the number eight seeded USC Trojans in this first game of the Pac-8 championship tournament. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion of this one in 15 minutes. You're watching the Pac-8 championship tournament from Cheney, Washington.
Friends and family, welcome back to the Eastern Washington University Recreation Center where we've got the final period of action between the number one seeded University of Washington Huskies and the number eight seeded USC Trojans. The surprise of the day so far, USC leading after two periods against the Huskies, some uh, late arriving skaters for USC. USC going to start with a man advantage for the first 29 seconds. Both, both goals scored by... Chris Chow for the team in red, USC Trojans, and uh, Williams finding the back of the net for the Huskies. Gary, what are you thinking here in this third period? What do you have to do if you're the Huskies to get back into this one? With the Huskies, you can keep doing what you're doing. They're, for whatever reason, they just can't find the back of the net. Like we talked about in that second period, they had at least eight open net. Shot and they shot her over it on the side of it. I really wouldn't change much. And they're going to be a penalty now. I think they're going to call that a slash for a. Uh... Actually, no. I thought that was going to go against USC. That's a hook. So that'll be a hook. But that that's one thing you can't do if you're a Husky. Take take a penalty. Or was that? The USC door is open. Well, yeah, it was definitely a hook against. But Chancey was coming off, yeah. so. We'll see who it is. It's Maloney. Going to take a two-minute seat for a hook. So to answer your question, I'm, the Huskies, you don't really just keep doing what you're doing. And as far as USC, they've played a stout game. There's not much they can change on that one except maybe try to get more offense on it. I think if you're Uf, USC, you've got to keep the Huskies out of that blue paint. Yeah. Because they have had too many opportunities today to find the back of the net and just have it. And with a team that's this good, just like on the special teams, you give them enough chances and they're going to get it. And looking around there for a slash call was Chow. He looked right at the rest and raised his hands. But now, that's why I was saying that the Huskies really don't have to change anything. They're flooding uh, the crease area extremely well. Uh, you can see their design there. They're flooding three guys down on it. They just got to put the puck in the open net. Um, but you got to tip your hat off to USC. They've kind of taken them off their game. They matched their speed, and I think that surprised the Huskies a bit. I don't. I thought, you know, you could see the Huskies thought, okay, we can match some of their speed, but no, USC's going stride for stride with them all the way down their lineup. Well, we talked about it. USC beat the number two seeded Utah Utes in LA earlier this year, which was a home game for them, which means that they had a full bench. So you can see that when this team's clicking, they click. Bouncing puck out front, cleaned up by the Huskies, and again, somehow, Heath Chancey gets to that one almost up in the slot. See, that's a prime example, Tyler, what we were just talking about less than two minutes ago. The Huskies, again, had an open net. Chauncey did a great job but he, when he went for the initial save, but he kind of slid out too far, and they couldn't get the puck back on their stick to put it in a far side, and it, it's just... It's just strange watching this, how many open nets that they're not getting the puck in. Well, and what's really interesting is I watched a handful of players run some mini stick handling drills and warm-ups. The close quarter stick handling, that sort of thing. So you would think that warming up that way, the Huskies would have a little bit of an advantage in that area. Now here come the Trojans again. Off to the far side, bringing it into the zone was O'Brien. Back to O'Brien. He goes... Up top now to Phillips. Phillips down low. Chow tried to send that towards the front of the net, but it's sticked up into the air quickly by Morris, who's now going to send it down the ice right to the goal mouth of USC. 15 seconds left on the power play for the Trojans. And Morris is such a solid D man for the Huskies. He is just, he's impressed me for two years. He's a Spokane product. I think uh, a lot of the Spokane area players know him from uh, growing up and playing with him in this area. It's uh, nice to see a homecoming here. Got a chance to see his dad earlier. Yeah. And a huge hit on the far side, and they're not going to say there was any penalty there. USC benches up in arms over that. But that might have just been a big, good, clean hit, Gary. Well, the coach is saying he wants to charge for USC on that one. And uh, we'll see. That was a massive hit. I know that much. Well, Preston Pats has been kind of a thorn on the side of the Huskies for this game. And 
though. Sometimes that's what you got to do to get your opponent off the get off their uh, mark. But I'm going to go back when we were talking about how the Huskies have been missing the open nets. That's taken nothing away from Chauncey. That kid has played outstanding. So please, anyone out there, no, there was no, that's not derogatory on him. No luck involved. Chauncey's played an unbelievable game for the Trojans right now. Well, at the end of the day, he's still got 28 saves so far. I mean, that is not a uh, a small number of saves, no matter what the reasoning. The official's going to have a conversation. Well, the board, and they are open. going to give a charge. After a conversation, UW is very unhappy about this. Yeah, the other but this is what you want to see from the officials. They got together. Yep. They had a conference. They made the right call. And if you're UW, of course, this is frustrating. But this is what you want. Out of officials, especially at this level, I give them kudos. The fish definitely on that one they, because I think they missed one of them, missed it, and they did. They came out to the center ice and talked about it. I think the linesmen had a lot to say on that one, that got what they saw, even though the Husky coaches, like you said, are livid. But uh, I liked what they did. They conferred, they decided that's what we got to do. It looks like is it Stevens, Stevens going again. in? This will be his uh, third penalty of the game. Nothing has come back to bite the Huskies yet, but only a matter of time for either one of these two teams. They're going to give them a five-minute major. They had to go with for a charge. Or, yeah, wow. So this is the uh, the biggest opportunity for USC in this contest. If they're able to net one more and keep the Huskies out of the back of the net, a three-to-one uh, deficit for the Huskies. And almost catching Chansey off guard there. Um, but a three to one deficit is going to be tough for them to overcome with 12 minutes left. Well, the way Chauncey's playing, it'd be real difficult to pop two on him. And for anyone that's new to the game, with a five minute, USC can score as often as they want or can. And they'll still, the Huskies will be manned down. So this is a golden opportunity for USC to put some distance on them and put a massive amount of pressure on the Huskies. Shot taken right off of the faceoff and covered up by Chansey. His 29th save today. Because I think you're, the workout. you're dead on, Tyler, on that one. I, the way Chansey's playing, man, that'd be tough to get two goals on him if they fall behind by two. That guy's just played outstanding. And the Huskies with a bit of the yips in the second period. They're going to look to come out strong. Chow's got both goals for USC so far today. Loses it in the neutral zone. Now all the way across the ice, resetting to the far side is Levine. Levine lays it off for Phillips. He goes back to Levine. Levine near side to Chow. He just couldn't get enough of it. The USC looking to take a page out of the UW book. But we were talking about how good of a player Chow is, but it looks like Levine sets everything up. And uh, he's real fast, real quick. And I've been watching him, and he kind of looks like he's the one that dictates what kind of offensive – attack they're going to do. The kid's really, really talented. Well, that lineup of Chow, Phillips, and Levine just feels deadly for oh. the Huskies. And as I say that, all three of the players touch the puck right there, a little give-and-go action. But you're right. They're a force to deal with. Now Chow waiting for the puck back at the top. Instead, it's going to go all the way behind the net by Mukinos. Here comes Chow looking for that backhand out front. Again, an opportunity here. Bouncing puck, and they're going to say that it was saved by Tyler Roberts right at the line. Best opportunity for USC on this power play with 333 left, 1551 left in this game. Well, we talk about how good Roberts is, but he just saved the Huskies tournament right now with that save. That was incredible. But he's so talented, you know, you kind of expect that. But that, that one, remember that save right there because that could be – go a long ways in this game but well, here's something to keep an eye on down there that was another one of those situations at the goal underneath the catwalk where the the puck was bouncing wasn't doing what the players expected it to something to keep an eye on this weekend mm -hmm. what what does the action in front of that goal in particular look like so roberts having to restring himself it's situated here that was a superb save by him. Well, let's take a look at the schedule for the rest of the day. Coming up at 2 o'clock, it's the number two Utah Utes taking on the number seven Western Washington University Vikings. Then at 5 o'clock, number three Cal faces off against WSU. And 
game four today, 8 o'clock, the nightcap. Number four, San Jose State against number five, Eastern Washington University. The roost opens for food and uh, 21 and over participants at uh, 7 o'clock tonight. So food is all ages, of course, uh, the roost 21 and over starting at 7 o'clock for the tail end of game number three and the start of game number four. We talk about it again. Back to Phillips on defense. Out ahead of him are both Chow and Levine. All three players on the near side now. The Trojans are extremely well-versed in being methodical out there on setting up their power play. There's a good poke check there. 248 left on the major penalty. Pass out front. Forehand in the back of the net, and USC nets another one thanks to Shea O'Brien and puts them up 3-1 to one over the reigning defending champions and the number one seed for this tournament, the University of Washington Huskies. Well, again, we talked about it roughly two minutes ago. Levine set that up. He, he, he picked it up in the neutral zone, did some nice deeks, went far to the left of um, Roberts, and he, and he spotted it. Did a nice little touch pass over, but Levine set that goal up. Again, give kudos to the score, but Levine set that whole thing up. And now we talked about it, down two, and they're still on the power play. Man, there's a lot of pressure now on the Huskies. And there was a lot of pressure on the team. We talked about the fact that they don't necessarily need to win this tournament to go to regionals, to get that regionals invite. But at the same time, you don't want your last game before regionals to be a loss in your conference tournament. Plus your comfort zone on it. You know, there's no for sure that they're there. So, you know, everything just keeps adding up to them. And 14.35 left, the way Chauncey's playing right now, they could get another goal of the Trojans. It would be real. So the winner of this game will play in the 3 o'clock game tomorrow as that will be the highest remaining seed and the lowest remaining seed. And the winner of this will be one of those two no matter what. <laughs> so lots of rest before tomorrow's game for whoever is the victor here today. USC looking to play spoiler in game one of the Pac-8 championship. You can get more information about the tournament at EWEaglesHockey.com. You can get uh, tournament merch at B4FHockey.com slash Pac-8. All the games will be broadcast on Facebook and on YouTube. The big implications in the ACHA West here if the number four team is knocked off by USC, who comes into the game ranked number 33 in the West. Trojans passing the puck around, a mishandled puck down low, but easily picked up by Phillips up top. He's going to put it on net, and now a rush opportunity for the Huskies, and they're just going to dump that down and try and kill off the penalty. By no means this game is over. There's too much time left, and the Huskies are too darn good to say, okay, it's over. But they're going to have to do something to try to get Chauncey off his game. Well, and they say a two-goal lead is the most dangerous lead in sports. The Huskies are going to try and make that uh, motto come to life here. 125 left on the power play. Huskies with it in their own end. But we were talking about this, and if it starts getting under 10 minutes and the, and the Huskies are still down by two, I can easily see them starting to pinch their defensemen. We're going to get a delay a game? There's a interference called on the netminder, I think. Yeah, he's unhappy. The netminder's real unhappy about this. I had, uh, to be quite honest, I looked down at my stats page because that was a fairly innocuous play. Thought we had a second before they reset. Yeah, that was that was an interesting. So this gives the Huskies a chance to get back into this one with the man advantage. They scored their first goal it, early on in this game, thanks to Williams finding the back of the net. The penalty box door is open, but nobody from USC in the box yet. And it looks like they're going to send over Ming Lee. To serve the penalty for Chansey, a delay of game. That's interesting. So four on four for the next 105. And then about 
50 seconds of power play opportunity for the Huskies. But four on four as we play it. But what I was getting at, if it gets below 10 minutes and if the Huskies are down by two, I can see they're pinching their defense because you got Morris out there who's extremely talented, Williams, and I can see the Huskies going into that game, starting to get their demon more involved. This one's Williams up top. He's going to float that down into the corner to Arzumanov. Back to Arzumanov. He's going to go near side, right out front, and another big save by Heath Chansey. Trailing there was uh, Darren Morris. You're just not able to get their stick on the puck in that slot area. Well, the Turtles are doing a great job of swarming whoever has the puck. I've noticed that. Williams has that one kicked away, and now, as we said it, coming the other way is Phillips in the center. He's got Salzgaber. Phillips looking for a second one, looking to go top shelf and lifts it up and over the top of the cage. Lucky break for the Huskies there. Here comes Maloney. He's waiting for the rest of his team to get on the ice. He's going to circle back. Now Wolf on the near side. He's going to bring it into the zone. 45 seconds on the power play for the Huskies. Maloney knocked off of the puck. That one off of the back of Wolf as it bounces down the ice. Knocked off is Levine. Huskies take a shot up and over the glass or up and over the cage into the glass. I notice the Huskies are getting more physical, and I think they're starting to feel some desperation right now. Bouncing puck out front again in the blue paint, turned away by Chansey. Up to the top of the zone again. Tipped out front, header towards goal by <laughs> Smith. And back to full strength hockey. Puck out into the center of the zone by... Endress right at the top of the crease and again turned away by Chansey. Smith now tries to walk it in. Chansey again with the leg pads, turns it aside. Chansey's just been phenomenal. And again, a point-blank shot turned away by Chansey. Luck into the center of the zone. Now squirts its way all the way back towards the University of Washington's net. Picking it up is Wolf. He's got a circle back as some heavy pressure now from Foley. Taken away in the center of the neutral zone by Mucanos. And Roberts slipping up behind his own net. Mucanos again going to turn and fire that off to the far side. You just kind of feel it. The Huskies are, you know, just a the pressure that's, that you can just see how they're playing that you know is starting to creep in. There's a tip, and again, Chauncey, he's just a wall out there. That was a beautiful tip by the Huskies, and he was there to smother it. Well, and as the number one seed, the Huskies had that target on their back coming into this game. I mean, really, they've had it for the whole season. Being the defending champs, they lifted the trophy on this ice last year, and I know that every team in the pack – has had a target on them for that. They want those pictures over the summer. I mean, as much as we want to talk about hockey, these boys love the social media, and there's nothing better <laughs> than uh, raising that trophy above your head and posting it on your Instagram. Better say no ice. So here come the Huskies the other way. USC got caught a little bit chasing. Here comes Wolf. He's going to fire it, deflect it straight down, and picked up by USC. Out front in the slot, backhander right over the shoulder by J.T. Rimmerin. And is that the life the Huskies need here as they tick under 10 minutes? It's going to coming at 9.45, J.T. Rimmerin. Well, it'll definitely shift some of the mindset of the Huskies. Like, okay, we finally got one in. And again, you got to give them credit because they – the Huskies were doing an outstanding job of putting traffic in front of Chauncey, and that's what happened on that one. He just couldn't see it. He went down butterflying it, and that's how it got over the top shoulder, but he, he couldn't see it because there was three players right in front of his view. So it'll be an interesting nine minutes and 40 seconds to see what, what happens now if, if, USC start, if USC starts feeling the pressure now. Um, interesting. And. UW bringing quite a contingent here this year of fans. 
Maloney has it knocked off of his stick. So you can feel the energy in this building rising yeah. as uh, UW pulls within one here. Maloney on the far side. He has it poked off of his stick by Chow. And now you see the Huskies are swarming. They're, they're, they're just sending four guys in on top of the net. And so they've opted to go that route. And it's working for them right now. Chow looking to dump that out. Snatched out of the air by Luce. Kicked away into the corner. Now onto the far side. Again, kicked away by Chansey. It's a shooting gallery right now for the Huskies. And now here comes Foley. He has it turned away at the last moment. The USC really parking the bus here late in this one. Three players still back in the defensive zone on that one. Not looking for that rush. Now it'll be interesting with the Trojans if they they start going to play not to lose rather than what they've been doing for two and a quarter periods of this game attack. And so the dynamics have shifted. They have. And if you're UW, this is where you thrive is in these chaotic situations. Now Chow looking to sneak it inside of that near post. What a hero he'd be if he was able to do that. Up the near side now. It's taken away. Here come the Trojans. Levine has it. He tries to go all the way across. It's taken away. Telegraphed that pass pretty well as Wolf's going to bring it up the far side. He loses a skate right in front of Tulu. Well, you can see the Huskies are jumping into the play every chance they can get. Morris floats that towards the center, looking for that tip. Back door now, not able to hold it was Wolf. Back up top to Morris. Morris into traffic out front. Puck at their feet. Still sitting right in between the faceoff circles. And now back out into the neutral zone. The Huskies going to have to reset. And they do. Wolf going to take that off the wall. No hustle there to get to the puck. May have beaten out the Trojan. As Ender is going to send it over to the far side. Another dynamic comes into play right now because you know the USC coach would like to have that timeout because they're they're running around. They, they're discombobulated right now. They're chasing the Huskies, and the Huskies got all the momentum. Now Watton going to carry it over to the far circle. Put it on net. It's deflected up into the netting with seven minutes remaining in this third period. Because if USC still had that timeout, I would not have been surprised to see that coach call a timeout about a minute ago to settle them down because they're just chasing the Huskies, and that's really playing into the Huskies' hands. Well, now if you're UW, you start looking at the amount of shots that USC has had, and do you feel more confident about pulling your netminder in this game than you would – typically down by a goal just because the Huskies have controlled the momentum so much? Yes. Yes, because the way the Huskies have shifted this game now, the tide's on to there, and this is how I'm used to seeing the Huskies play. And they're just swarming. They're just attacking constantly. So, yeah, I, I don't, I wouldn't hesitate at all. Not at the six-minute mark. No. That's what you're talking about. No, yeah, because the Huskies right now, they have taking this game over as far as momentum and how they're attacking USC. And USC is kind of being more methodical and they're like, which way do we want to go? It looks going to be interesting in the last six minutes. Now here come the Huskies again. Near side is Arzumanov. He's going to cut towards the middle. And Maloney's still able to hold on to the puck, but just for a moment, he's got it. Looking for a man out front. Now Watton, back door now. Opportunity by Arzumanov. And again, off the side of the cage. Goes the Husky shot. A game of inches, and the Huskies just a couple inches away from the back of the net every time. Win or lose this game, the Huskies are going to have nightmares on how many open net shots they had if they did not bury it. If, uh, if the Huskies are able to come away with this one, I wouldn't be surprised if they're playing shinny in the hallway this, <laughs> this weekend just to get that feel back. Something. I have not seen that many. And, again, nothing against Chauncey. He's had an unbelievable game, but how many open net shots they have not put the puck in once. Chauncey has had some incredible oh, saves. You can't say enough good things about how he's played. That's why That's why this game's so close, it's just how well he's played. But I'm even starting, and, again, we don't have any skin in this one, but the tension you're seeing off of both squads right now is just bubbling. And here comes our zooming off. He's put right into the USC bench. There goes zooming off. In. <laughs> well, the Huskies had this one drawn up. They knew exactly what they were going to do. 
And USC, using the body, broke that up a little bit. But still, on the backside is Morris. He's looking for that backdoor shot out front again. Bouncing puck out of the slot. But if you watch Chauncey, his rebounds, he directs them extremely well. There's not a loose rebound that he doesn't control it. And, and I picked that up off him. He's got great control on those shots. Well, you say that, and I noticed that on that last series with Arzumanov, that when he made that first save, he deflect, he directed that puck to the side of the net, not just straight out, right. but sweeped it back towards the goal line a bit, and that distressed uh, Arzumanov shot a little bit. And that just shows you how talented he is. Shot taken into the midsection, and you can see the frustrations. He's starting to mount. Look like uh, Williams for UW and Phillips for USC. Under five minutes to play. But as talented as Chauncey is, I think you're going to start seeing him smother the puck a little bit more, get some whistles to, to get them to settle down a little bit rather than hurry scurry that they're doing because he's so talented in the net. I can see him going to that style of game. There's Chow on the far side. Tries to bang it off the glass and hits one of the stanchions. Comes right back at him. Unlucky bounce for USC. Out into the neutral zone. And now, with some speed, Ooh. comes USC. And now Ooh. the USC bench frustrated by that icing call. I think that might have been a makeup for an icing call on the Possibly. last trip down the Possibly. ice. Possibly. That, that, was, that, that was interesting. This has been one heck of a game to kick off this back eight championship weekend this, this game has everything in it and just a reminder for everybody out there listening game two coming up at two o'clock number two utah against number seven western washington university right here on this youtube or facebook channel wherever you're watching from just impressed with both these teams husky's still with it they're putting they're starting to turn up their pressure Off the wall, sent back in, and you can see USC not going real deep. They are playing uh, a little bit of defense here, looking for these rushes. And uh, the Huskies, credit to them as Enders brings that in, but uh, credit to them for still being able to get rushes off when mm -hmm. USC is trying so hard to hold that defensive shape. Well, that's one thing you see USC has shifted to is not so much – play not to lose but they're more defensive minded they're trying to stay in some of the passing lanes and make the game choppy for the huskies but the way the huskies are playing they're going to just flood them and so usc's got to be aware of the pressure the huskies going to bring on them face off one by usc can't get it out of their end still in possession methodically looking to bring it up the ice out into the neutral zone to salzgaber and now Watton, he's got a race to the puck. Swept out into neutral ice by Shea O'Brien. He's going to send that all the way back down. And now a mishandled puck gets to Salzgaber. He feeds it out front. Now back to Salzgaber into the corner. The assistant captain for the Trojans slowing down UW. Clank on the near side. Now Maloney. Maloney takes a couple of steps looking to get the goal off. He ends up in the... Uh, Crease in the goal, and the referee is going to wave that one off, saying that he pushed that in when he pushed straight through Heath Chancy. The so 317 still a one goal margin in favor of the number eight seeded USC Trojans. What a story it would be if they came in here and knocked off the number one seed, the reigning champion of the Pac 8, number four team in the West. A heck of a storyline to kick off today, but the Huskies. Not going to let it go that easily. And if uh, we do end up in overtime, it is five on five, just like the NHL playoffs. Five on five, switch sides until somebody finds the back of the net. Shot from the near side point. But before we get to that point, the Huskies have got to solve the riddle that is Heath Chansey. That one up into the jersey of Maloney, trying to take a souvenir home with him. So we should let him know that uh, we can get him one of those. We know a guy. <laughs> well, I think now what I've noticed are two things. I think the Huskies will now start pinching more of their demon in, try to get a, uh, that extra shooter in there. And USC, I, I'm going to call it, they're cautiously playing defense. They're just, they've slowed down their offensive attack. 
and they're more. You mentioned it methodically trying to to work their system. So we'll see which one uh, comes out on top. And they've got Tolu and Quezada back on defense. Two of their better defensemen. I don't think those guys will get off the ice for the next two minutes. Those guys are really, really talented D, man. Well, now we start watching Tyler Roberts as we tick closer to two and a half minutes. But as I say that, here comes Levine. Levine stops, handles the puck, sends it back around, and Trojan's not looking for that constant offense like the Huskies are. Even Tolu here at neutral ice, already backskating by the time Lampman picked up that puck. Now a rush opportunity, sticked away, and again sent down the ice. By the Huskies, Smith going to bring it in, or by the Trojans, picked up by the Huskies. Smith brings it across the blue line, 215 left in this one. On the far side now, it goes to Enders. Up top, sticked away, near side to Morris. Hometown kid looking to be the hero here in Cheney and just couldn't hold on to it. Chance for the Trojans here to skate. Chow with it, he's already got two. Forehand, back of the net, Chris Chow. That may have sealed it. Um. And you can see the absolute frustration from Tyler Roberts. And he may, he might have picked up a penalty. He here. may have well picked up a penalty. He, he slammed a stick one time and then he did it again. The ref blew the whistle. So I'm wondering if they didn't get him for possibly an unsportsmanlike or some bug. And with 152, a two-goal deficit, interesting. So the penalty not on. Wow. So it looks like the second man down the ice was Owen Phillips, and he's the one that's going to pick up that penalty. I'm just getting ready to say this is going to make but now the Huskies being a man up, the way they've been attacking offensively, Chauncey's going to have to – well, he's stood on his head all game, yes. but – but this is where you, you'd expect Roberts to head to the bench rather quickly. Well, you were mentioning earlier, and I was watching Roberts at the two-minute mark. He kept looking at the bench to see if they're going to call him, and now he's looking. Now they're getting ready to wave him, it looks like. And there he goes to the bench. And sixth attacker on the ice for the Huskies as that puck poked out of the zone. Full body effort by Tyler Levine, who has worked – has he been incredible today the or what? entire day. He's shot taken wide of the net, looking for the quick pickup and tuck it inside the post there. Now you'll see Chauncey more of smothering the puck rather than trying to push it out, getting the offense, because they got the empty net, trying to kill off the penalty. So he's, he's a key in this to slow things down. So as it stands... USC going to move on to the 3 o'clock game tomorrow. Semifinal number one. So if you're a USC fan, we'll see you right here at 3 o'clock, likely. Obviously, uh, the Huskies still a fighting chance here. Only two goals down. I wouldn't count them out. Not by no means, even though they're down by two at the minute 13 left. That The Huskies are just too powerful to just write them off. Now, if it was like... 20 seconds left. I said, yeah, we could, we could do it, but they're, they're, they're a stout hockey club. So, 4-2, to two, the score line now, despite UW out shooting USC 40-22 to 22 so far. Shot from the point, deflected straight down, loose puck still out front, still loose in the crease. It's a pushing and shoving as Chansey covers that one up. You notice, what, you notice what Chancey did on that one. He he got the puck. It got away from him. But then he literally put his body. Just laid parallel to the line there. And then he, he allowed his teammates to put the puck under his pad. That's a heads-up goaltender there. So at the conclusion of this game, we'll take a break, and we will be back with the second game of the day when the number two Utah Utes, number nine in the West, Take on the number seven Western Washington University Vikings, who will be looking for their own Cinderella story here in Chile. And Smith able to tuck it inside the near post with 106 left. And as we said, it's not over yet. Nope. You cannot count the Huskies out. I, I literally don't care. They're just that talented. And that one snuck in because Chauncey had. 
he had a nice job. He, he went laterally to try to get to the post, and it just – the puck beat him before he got all the way to the end. But this game's far from over. So the six-on-four expires. Now back to five-on-five five hockey. Roberts back in his net. If the Huskies pick up this face off, you can – You know he's coming he's, off. He's going right back to the bench. Can't do it just yet as shot fired from neutral ice by Levine. 50 seconds left to play. As the Huskies come down the ice, Roberts races to the bench. This one back behind the net. As Phillips looks to send it down the wall and it gets past Lang. Not what the Huskies want. That's going to be an icing. They're going to say it wasn't touched up by Lang here against the wall. That's the only risky run by what the Trojans have done in the last four or five minutes, playing a little cautious, more defensive um, stance on it. You, you run into this possibility that uh, you give the Huskies momentum because they're constantly on the attack now. So it'll be interesting to see how it will play out. The Huskies back with it. Smith is going to feed it down low. He's beat up along the boards there. It's going to go back to the top of the zone, backhanded down low. So oh. Lou knocks off his man. And still the Huskies not able to tuck it in that near side. The entire end of the goal was open. Chelsea doesn't Chancey have a stick. No stick. 15 seconds left. River on the far side. Again, another open net that they missed. And that one may be their best opportunity of the day there. That's going to that, Smith with wow. it, and that's going to do it. The USC Trojans knock off the number one <laughs> University of Washington Huskies to kick this tournament off with a bang. In Gary, not what I was expecting coming in here today. Incredible hockey game. I, I hats off to both of them, but I am extremely impressed with the USC. First time I've seen them with a full squad, but I don't care. The Huskies are going to be able to go to the regional. If they don't That's get in on not, there's something wrong. And when they go, you can't count that team out. I think they just – USC caught them off guard. And USC's got a talented hockey club. They they do. So USC wow. now has wins against UW and Utah, the top two seeds in this tournament. Uh, win against Utah coming in L.A. We'll see Utah next against the Western Washington University Vikings. But, Chauncey, you, you have got to if there was a if there was a three-star, he'd be the number one star because that kid – was incredible in net for USC. But it was a great game, great way to kick off this Pac-8 tourney. Can't say enough about both of them. They 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 gave it all they had. And uh, you got a little nervous. You knew you at Dub, if they have any time left, you can't can't count them out. But great hockey game, Tyler. Plain and simple, an great hockey game. Incredible way to start the tournament. So we'll be back in about 45 minutes with game number two of the Pac-8 championship tournament. When the number two Utah Utes face off against the number seven Western Washington University Vikings tomorrow, it'll be the USC Trojans at three o'clock. We'll see you coming up in 45 minutes. You're watching the Pac-8 Championship Tournament from Cheney, Washington.